world without order comes a man without fear. Mad Max. Pray that he's out there somewhere. That was part of a teaser trailer for this film, which doesn't appear on any DVD release. And this is the most recent release of Mad Max in this country. Um, well, I guess I'd better show you a copy of this because, you know, it would be a bit sacrilege to talk about Ausploitation and not refer to Mad Max not one time. But there's a couple of bits in here I wanted to show you a bit close up, so I'll have a look. It's got all the cover art, and if you look very closely here, you can see all the home video releases in this country. Um, a lot of eBay sellers will try and pass that off as the first release, which is a load of bullshit. This is actually the first Roadshow home video, which is pretty hard to find, and I don't own a copy of it. I haven't fi found one in suitable enough quality, so until such time as there's a good one on eBay or whatever, I'm not going to buy it, but that's that. I also bought the MGM release because this was the first American release, I believe, that had the Australian dialogue, but it's also got subtitles on it. For, to translate the Australian slang, which is really difficult to understand, it, even for locals sometimes. But yeah, so that's that's quite a good release there from MGM. Speaking of mad people, Mad Dog Morgan with Dennis Hopper, and this is a director's cut released by Umbrella, and yeah, definitely must see. It's it's a funny little movie, I have to say, and Dennis Hopper just steals the show. It's quite quite a few special features, as you can see. It's got a little Australian cinema booklet from Umbrella there too, in that one. Be still. Be still. Be still, you little cunt! By Christ, I'll bet you're brainless. Can't come outside, because no gas mask. And Bubby, die! One of my favourite Aussie films of the 90s was Bad Boy Bubby. I couldn't believe my eyes when I first saw this. Great film, loved it, loved it, loved it. Not for everyone though, because um, it gets mixed reviews. A lot of some people hate it. The DVD is a two disker that was again released by Umbrella, and I think is it Blue Underground that released this in the states? I think so. It was jam packed with extras too, so great, great DVD. Chopper. Well, you can't get it in a slipcase anymore. This was back in the early 2000s, maybe 2001, something like that. Released by Palace. It's got a little slip thing there and heaps of special features. Call it! Call it, Steve! Take it easy. Stone. I think the North American release is identical to this one. Again, another umbrella release. It's a double disker too, so visceral little Aussie biker film, which is a must mention in an exploitation video. And there's the old VHS on Roadshow there. It's uh, not terribly rare. You can usually pick that up off eBay. Comes up several times a year usually. Ghost of the Civil Dead is a prison film, one of the bleakest films I've ever seen. Um, that's Nick Cave on the cover. Can I just say, I think Nick Cave is so overrated. One of the actors who steals the show is a guy called Dave Mason. He was a lead singer of a band called The Reels back in the 80s. And his performance in this film was amazing. It certainly outdoes him. He should be on the cover, not Nick Cave. Anyway, Ghost of the Civil Dead. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Another prison film with Stir. This is a double feature with The Money Movers, which is I haven't seen yet, but Stir... Uh, was made back in 1980 and I think someone should sit down and count the amount of F and C words in that film because I think that would really make a, a, you know, a record. It's got some of the foulest language you've ever seen in a movie so there you go, that's a good one to get. Another Umbrella release, funny enough. Colin Eggleston in Long Weekend, just a quick mention of this. I mean a lot's been said about Long Weekend but good DVD release here. Uh, it's worth watching, it's more about atmosphere than gore and stuff like that. He also directed this film called Cassandra in the 80s. Again, another umbrella release. I picked that up for five bucks. Um, yeah, that's a pretty average sort of 80s horror film. Kind of Eyes of Laura Mars style. Incredible. A ghost ship 
searching the secret oceans of the dead for its lost crew. Sky Pirates. You know, I check eBay frequently and have done so for years. I have never, ever seen this original Village Roadshow listed. Not one time. I've, it could have been. It could have slipped under the radar. But there you go. That's um, a pretty shitty Aussie version of Raiders of the Lost Ark. The VHS is worth getting because it's got a short film on it called It's a Living about a taxi driver or a taxi driver in Sydney. It's quite funny actually. So yeah, very rare Village Roadshow release there. Race for the Yankee Zephyr, released by Thorn EMI. It's on DVD in America under a different title, which a name of which escapes me, but this is the old VHS release. It's actually a co-production, partly funded by America and in New Zealand it was filmed, I think. So sometimes the New Zealanders claim this one as their own, but it is a co-production. Patrick, again, Umbrella. This is the ultimate Ozploitation edition, full of special features. It's pretty much a repro of the uh, North American disc. It's got another one of those little booklets in it too. You're getting dissersed, that's all. Dissersed is in all of us. Not in me! Thirst, a vampire film. And I don't know why they're saying uncut widescreen collector's edition. It's never had any censorship troubles. It's only rated M, so... Um, yeah, a couple of extra features. A beautiful print on this one, too, so... Check out that one. It's pouring with rain outside. I don't know if you can hear it anyway. Uh, Razorback, again, Umbrella, one of my favourite 80s Aussie films. Regardless of what people think, I think it's pretty good. The F.J. Holden. This is one of my favourite Aussie films of the 70s. I think it plays more like a comedy, and you think, what's it about? It's basically about a bunch of young people living in a Sydney suburb out in the west there. Very funny film. It's good to look at it as a bit of a comedy. Very ocker. Oz, the great rock and roll movie, is again an Umbrella one and definitely worth a look. The Night the Prowler. I really think this film deserves a bit more attention. It was directed by Jim Sharman who did the Rocky Horror Picture Show based on a book by Patrick White. It flopped at the box office and got pretty bad reviews and I think the reason why is because it was way ahead of its time and people didn't understand it but looking back on it now you think fuck that was really something, something else. It was made back in 1978. And I think that's worth checking out. It's a very strange little movie. Midnight Spurs has to get a mention. I once saw this on go on eBay for $120. But there you go, this is the old roadshow release with a surprise in the middle of First Blood for a promo. This is the DVD released by Real. Um, and that company is a sub-label of Village Roadshow. Really shitty DVD treatment from them, I have to say. The print doesn't look too bad. It's got English subtitles as well, but the reason why is because you just can't understand the dialogue. It's really poor sound. I really think the Village Roadshow should hand the distribution rights to, like, Umbrella, because they do a much better job than, than this. You know, it's really bad. Woodwink's not a bad film. It's about a bloke who goes around robbing banks and then um, pretends he's blind in order to try and, uh, you know, swindle the court system and stuff. It's actually based partly on a true story. And it was released on Australian video. And needless to say, Umbrella released the DVD again, $5. It's not a bad little 80s drama. It's not really exploitation as such, but I thought it was worth mentioning, that's all. Blood Moon, released on the Plaws Home Video, which was a sub-label of Village Roadshow. And, um, God, this was a shit film. You can get this on DVD now. But this old VHS has a double-sided cover, I'll show you. And that's the other side. I'm just covering that woman's breasts there. Look at that, it won a very prestigious award there at the Houston International Film Festival. A band in Britain. Um, Bloodlust is like a zero budget, gory film from the early 90s and it's worth watching just because it's so ridiculous and over the top. No DVD release of this one. You can only get the, the old VHS on the Fatal Visions label which was a sub-label of the Home Cinema Group I believe. Bootleg, another one on Fatal Visions, is a very rare title to find. It's about, you know, this detective up in Queensland, kind of set noirish, like 1940s style, but set in the 80s. I believe this did get a release in Britain as well. To Make a Killing was also known as Wild Boys and was 
supposed to be released by CBS Fox, but they didn't release it. And instead, we got this one a couple of years later under that title. Um, this is a bizarre, stupid movie with some of the most appalling dialogue you'll ever hear. And then it just degenerates into this horrendous violence, and it just doesn't make any sense. The Sacred Sex is kind of like a documentary style. It was partly funded by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, so it's nice to see that our taxpayer dollars are hard at work. But yeah, I thought it was worth showing. Why not, you know? Thanks for watching. I'll probably do another one of these down the track at some stage, but stay tuned for some other titles coming soon.